186 students. This is your instructor, Mrs. Thomas. Today, I'll learn the objectives for chapter two. I want you to understand the concept of a fraction. I want you to be able to distinguish uh, four types of fractions, be able to convert and reduce fractions. I also want you to be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. So let's get started. problems one through eight. Okay, so let's start with number one. Give you a minute to copy this little problem. to write mine. Um, if you enjoy writing yours vertical, that's fine. Uh, horizontal, but I enjoy vertical. I enjoy vertical. So I'm looking at my denominator. I'm looking at seven and a half. I'm looking at three over four. I'm looking at the denominators. The bottom numbers, two and four. Okay. So first, give you an idea. I want you to think about your time tables. All right, just need a few. I want you to think about your four timetables. Do you see the things that they have in common? Okay. Do you see any factors that they both share? Okay. Well, I see four. I see four. I see eight as well, but I always want to do the lowest um, common denominator if possible, so that way I won't have to necessarily reduce. Okay, so let's use four. You place the four in the denominator spot. Now I need help with the numerators. Okay, so I want you to think, look at the four, let's look at these two denominators. Think about your timetables. Four times what will give you four? Good, times one. Take that same times one to your numerator, to the very top. So four times one gave me four. Three times one would give me three. Very good. Next, two times what would give me four? One. Times two, very good. Take that same times two to the very top, to your numerator spot. One times two is two. You already had the whole number seven and you had nothing here. So I want you to keep your denominator. I want you to add the numerators. Let's add the top numbers. Add the numerators together. Two plus three is five. And bring down your stack. Now, seven and five over four is considered to be what type of fraction? Five over four. If the number on top, the numerator is larger than the denominator, it's called improper. Well, we never want an improper fraction. Agree? Good. Okay. So what we need to do here is the numerator or top goes in, bottom goes out. I need to change this improper, it's very improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay. So four goes into five one time. One time four is four. I have one left over. So this is one and one over four. All right, this is the same as five over four. One and one over four. I want you to take the seven whole plus the one whole. I want you to give me a total, add it together. Seven whole and one whole, I need to do something with it. Okay, so this is one over four. I've already changed this. So it should be eight and one four. Eight and one fourth. Get that copy down. I'm sure you already had it, but I just always like to make sure you have 
at least more than just one example. I know you will be able to do the add and reduce on the rest of them, but if you would just bear with me, just let me do a few more with you just to make sure you understand it completely. Okay, hope you got that written down and with the video you will be able to erase would rewind and come back. And that's why um, I wanted to create these videos so that you would be able to erase and come back to them. Okay. Let's go. I had to choose one. Of course, I want you to be challenged. So I won't choose number three. I want you to be challenged. Um, and if you're gonna work it out the same way you work it out with the rest of them, um, so I don't want to do all of the one. I want to make sure you understand. Let me see. Um, let's go with number six. Let's go with number six. Give you, I just want to give you another example. One third plus eight and a half. Okay. One third plus eight and a half. I still need help with my common denominator, which means I need, let me set this up like a proportion. Okay, let me get my, let me think about my two timetables. And I just like to show you all of the steps, just in case you need a refresher. I see something that they have in common already. I hope you've noticed the same thing. Hope you notice that they have a common denominator of six. Okay. Now I need some help filling in the blanks. Two times what would give me six if you're thinking about your time tables? Okay. Times three. Take that same times three to your numerator spot here at the very top. One times three is three. Very good. Three times what would give me six? Okay, times two. Take that same times two to the very top, to your numerator spot. One times two is two. Okay, I didn't have a whole number in front, but I do have an eight hold here. I wanna leave my denominator alone and it says to add. So two plus three is five, very good. And bring down your eight. So eight and five over six is the correct answer. And notice you don't have to divide because in order to be able to divide, the six will have to be here. Okay, Improper when the number on top is bigger than the number on the bottom, where the five is lower. So eight and five over six for that one. Okay, I'll give you a moment to copy that one down. So I don't want to give you more than just one example. These are just practice problems. Just a refresher. Okay. Next, we're looking at subtraction. We're looking at subtraction. All right. So give me eleven copy down. Give me eleven copy down, please. Okay. And also, let's do eleven and. I want to do one with the least number. Maybe eleven and fifteen. Eleven and fifteen. Okay. So get eleven and fifteen copy down for me, please. Bear with me. Okay, so let's try the first one. Let's try 11. Just, just a refresher on your subtraction. Same idea with my common denominator. I still need help. Okay, so I'm thinking of my five time tables. I'm thinking about my four time tables. I'm thinking of the number they both share. Just 
going to give you every step written down so that there's no um, confusion. Okay. I'll do the same. And this is something that um, if you are thinking of it mentally, it's fine. But sometimes I, I'm a visual learner. I need to see it. I need to see exactly what you're talking about um, so that I can get a better understanding of what's going on. Okay. So I noticed that the, the common denominator is 20. That's um, a number that they both have in common when we talk about factors. Okay. Now I need some help filling in the blank. Four times what will give me 20? Very good. Times five. Take that same times five to my numerator spot. One times five is five. Five goes into 20 how many times? Or five times what will give me 20? Times four, very good. Take that same times four to the very top of my numerator here. Three times four is 12. Well, I'm gonna leave my denominator alone, but this time instead of adding, I wanna subtract. 12 take five away is seven. Very good. Very good. Just a refresher, just a refresher, just to make sure you understand the concept. Okay, let's do one more. Even though you may not need it, I understand. My scholars, I understand, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay, because sometimes I need to verify myself and clarify, verify and clarify, just to make sure I understand. Right. I'm thinking about my eight time tables. I'm thinking about my 12 time tables. I'm thinking about what they have in common. Just going as many as I could think about. I want to make sure you have a clear picture. Okay, I thought about my eight time tables. Okay, I'm thinking about 12 as well. Can I stop? Do I see anything they have in common? Definitely. Notice, before I can even start really writing all of my 12 time tables down, I noticed that they have a 24 in common. So my common denominator is 24. Well, you may say, Miss Thomas, why can't I just do 12 times 8 and get 96? You can, and that could be your common denominator. You just have to reduce um, your fraction. You just have to reduce it, that's all, but it's fine with me. Okay, I need some help filling in that blank. 12 times what would give me 24? Times 2, very good. So what's 8 times 2? Good, 16, very good. 8 times what would give me 24? Good, times three, yes. Take that same times three. What's well, six times three? That gives you 18. Leave your common denominator alone. Okay, now you're gonna help me subtract. 18 takes 16 away equals, very good, two. And four minus three is one. Hmm, I'm looking at that two over 24, I'm thinking about, I think I could reduce that. I think there is a number, the exact same number. I think I can reduce or simplify the fraction by two. Two will go into two how many times? One. Two will go into 24 how many times? 12. You had the whole number one, just stick that out in front. So that answer is one and one twelfth. One and one twelfth. Okay, so these are just some practice problems for you to do. You have your assignment will be in your textbook. Um, so that these are sometimes I often have students that will say, Miss Thomas, do you have any practice problems that I can do uh, to help me understand it better? So um, these are not uh, for your ex assignment. Your assignment is in your textbook, and I will give you those page numbers. This is for the practice that you may need in order to understand how to do um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions. So I always do just some extra practice and enrichment problems for those who may um, want some extra um, help or just some uh, extra refresher. Okay, so get that copy down. Let's go to the next step.
simple to multiply and reduce it. Multiply and reduce. I'm using this to get those practice problems copied down. For some students, if you understand how to cross cancel, I don't have a problem with you cross canceling. If not, we can multiply straight across and then reduce your fraction. Okay, so let's start with 21. I have three over eight times four over nine. Now, some students may say, Ms. Thomas, teach me how to cross cancel so that I'll know what to do. Okay, so I do both ways. First, I'm going to multiply straight across. Just say you didn't have a clue what cross canceling was. All right, 3 times 4 is 12. 8 times 9 is 72. But it can be reduced. So I'm thinking, well, hmm, what number will go into 12 and 72? I'm thinking possibly maybe 3 or 4. So let's Let's go with four. Let me think about that. Four goes into 12 how many times? Would you, would you agree with three? Good. Four goes into 72. Hmm. I don't have my calculator, but I do have my mind. Okay, because four goes into seven one time. One times four is four. Seven minus four is three. Bring down the two. So four times eight is 32. So that will be three over eight. Well, Ms. Thomas, tell me about this cross canceling that you keep speaking of. Okay, same problem. Okay. Cross count is when you can look across. Okay, hmm, three times nine. All right, if I'm doing my three time tables, three times what is three? One, three times what is nine? Three, cross canceling. You do it to the four. Oh, I do my four time tables, four times what is uh, four, one, four times what is eight? Two, okay, is that right? Good, so one times one is one, and two times three is six. Okay. So what have, what have we done wrong? What have we done? I see the mistake, I hope y'all caught the mistake. Did y'all see it? I was just making sure. I was just making sure y'all were looking. What do you see? Right here, four goes in 72, 18 times, or does it go in eight, eight times? Good, all right? So just important, you always wanna go back and double check, and double check again and make sure, all right? So here, three over 18, hmm, I'm not quite finished yet. Three will go in three how many times? And three goes in 18 how many times? Okay? So sometimes it could be just that quick when you're doing a problem. So I always want you to go back, check, double check, and double check again. Because sometimes it could be just something just so small. It's Thomas, I forgot to put a one in front of my eight, okay? So go back and check and recheck again, all right? One over six, very good. All right, let's try 22. 22 has one and two thirds times 12. Hmm. Well, I definitely don't want you to do one times 12 is 12, okay? So I want you to change my mixed number to improper. So I want you to take the whole number, one times three is three, plus two is five, and keep the three. Well, Miss Thomas, I have a 12, but I don't even know what to do with it. Just put it over one, you know, so that it's evenly balanced. Just put it over one. You can either cross counsel if you know how to do that, or you can multiply straight across. Whatever is convenient for you. So 5 times 12 is 60, and 3 times 1 is 3. Well, 3 goes into 60 evenly how many times? 20. So you can write either 20 over 1 or just plain 20. Okay. 
okay? So the same will go over here, it will be 500 over one. Same thing, all right? Multiply 500 times eight, 16 times one, and then try to reduce your fraction. So I think, I don't think you will be able to look and master all of these practice. So these are just practice problems, just some things that if you wanted to go back and refresh and look at, um, if you were doing an assignment and you said, well, I don't know how to do it, go back and look at the practice problems that I will upload. Okay, so if you have 9 and 2 over 6 times 4 and 4 over 8, I want you to definitely change this mixed number to an improper fraction. All right, we're going to multiply and add. 9 times 6 is 54. 54 plus 2 is 56 over 6. You always keep your denominator the same. 4 times 8 is 32. 32 plus 4 is 36 over 8. Okay. Would it be convenient to cross cancel? Okay. Because you can just multiply straight across and then try to reduce. It's going to be a large number, but you can do it. All right. This is what cross canceling comes in. Just a, just a little quicker method. But um, So think about your 6 times table. 6 times what is 6? 1. 6 times what is 36? 6. Think about your 8 times tables. 8 times what is 8? 1. 8 times what is 56? 7. Okay, so 7 times 6 is 42. So it is 42 over 1 or just 42? 42 over 1. Okay, so get those down and we're going to our last set. division mode. Okay. You can actually throw multiplication and division are um, um, easier and these my students think they're easier than the add and subtract them. Okay, so let me get this while you are looking over the practice problem. Board. All right, this last section is on division, okay, and reducing. So this is keep, change, flip. Remember that? Keep, change, they used to call it KFC. Keep, change, flip only works for division. So for example, you have three over four divided by one over four. All right, I'm gonna keep three over four. I'm gonna change my division to multiplication and I want to, I don't know what I, why I wrote that John. I want to do the reciprocal, which means to flip the reciprocal four over one. You can cross cancel or multiply straight across. Three times four is 12. Mm -hmm. Four times one is four. 12 divided by four is three. Keep change flip on division. Well, Ms. Thomas, what if it was like 30? How could I keep change and flip on 30? You have six and three fourths divided by nine over 12. Well, before you can keep, you want to keep, but you want to change this to improper. So I want you to multiply and add. So six times four is 24, plus three is 27, and leave your four alone. I want you to still change, and I want you to still flip or use the reciprocal. I want you to flip it over, turn it over. 12 over nine, okay? You can multiply straight across or you can cross cancel, whatever's convenient for you, okay? Nine times what will give you nine? One, nine times what will give you 27? Three, four times what will give you four? One, four times what will give me 12? Three, so we're just doing our timetables. If not, multiply straight across, okay, and reduce. Three times three is? nine over one, which is nine.
okay? Well, Miss Thomas, I don't know what this keep change flip is. Just, you wanna keep your fraction. If it's mi uh, mixed number, change it to improper change. You can't divide, so you need to multiply, so that's the change. And do the reciprocal, flip it over, okay? If you don't know how to cross cancel, do 27 times 12. I'll do that for you, just to make sure it's 27 times 12. Okay, just say, you said, Miss Thompson, I just multiplied it out. You get 324. Four times nine is 36. 324 divided by 36 equals nine. Okay, so even if you don't know how to do cross counseling, you can still achieve the same answer and still understand it for all right, so you would keep, change, and flip. Okay, keep, change, and flip on those. Okay, so I have the YouTube channel up so you'll be able to stop the recording and look at all of the problems and then we're gonna look at our last set. Okay, so we have our last set of practice problems are as follows. And don't worry, I will never have it set up like this. It will not be set up like this at all. Okay. I think this is these are just some challenging problems to look at. I think I think they wanted to challenge your mind. Don't worry, and Thomas will always set it up in a way that you will be able to understand and you will not be uh, lost or confused or anything. I'm gonna make sure that you're not lost, stuck, or confused. Okay, well, Miss Thomas, what in the world is going on with 37 through 40? Why do they have it set up like that? Okay, why, why is that? Okay, remember we talked about when you're dividing, just say you had four fifths and you were trying to divide. The top number goes in, the denominator goes out. We talked about that in a, in a prior video, okay? It's the same thing here. It is, just say for example, 37. They have seven over 25, and I don't think there, there you don't have any problems in the book that are like this. I think these are just enrichment or just some extra problems for you to look at, but you won't have any problems set up like this on your test your quiz or your exam. I think these are just some challenge problems for those who uh, want a challenge. So that just means that the top number went in, the denominator went out, okay? So if you had to rewrite this, the 6050 divided by seven over 25 is how it would look, that's it. It's just a different look. So you would still keep, change, flip, okay, 25 times what? We think about quarters now. 25 times one is 25. 25 times two quarters would give you 50. So six times one is six, and two times seven is 14. But Ms. Thomas, I think I can reduce. I know you can reduce that by two. Two goes into six three times, and two goes into um, 14, seven times. So it's just a different look, that's all. So these are just some practice problems to kind of get you started, but these will not be on any classwork, homework, exam, or fine. This is just some enrichment if you want to just um, give your mind a boost, enhance your knowledge. Okay, so I hope this has helped. Thank you so much. Um, please log on to the Zoom meeting if you have any questions, if you have any comments. If you're unable to get on Zoom, just shoot me an email. Um, if you're at work, if you're not able to get on Zoom, I perfectly understand. So thank you so much for the students and have a blessed day.